Hey everyone, it's Ed Graney and Adam Hill from the Review Journal. Uh, we thought it'd be cool this year to have a bracket and an expert pick games, much like Barack Obama did when he was the president, Barackatology. We're gonna go Hillatology. Uh, big, Barack, big Barack Obama fan here in Adam Hill, so he's gonna try to do better than the president of the past in uh, recent years. How are you? I'm good. You said we were gonna have an expert do it. We couldn't find one, so that's <laughs> Filling in today, and we're going to try to do this. That's why uh, you're here. Before we get to, we're going to start with the Sweet 16. And by the way, ReviewJournal.com, every day, the two lovely ladies behind us are going to update Adam's picks. You can make fun of him. You can email him. Uh, don't email me. I get enough of those. You can go on Adam at any time and, and rip his picks or do whatever you want. Before the Sweet 16, though, I do want to ask you about some early games. Tell us first and second rounds. Well, first round, first round um, upsets. Who are the upsets on, on the board right now? There's a couple. I'll tell you for sure. One that's not is Gonzaga. As you see, I'm so <laughs> Gonzaga. You're very excited. I already put them in the Sweet 16. We're good to go. Uh, a couple of them, East Tennessee State I love. I think a lot of people have talked about this game already. East Tennessee State has all kinds of talent. They can score and they can really defend. And I think that that's going to come in handy against a team that I think in Florida has a lot of athleticism, not much else. And they play in the SEC, and you'll probably find out, don't have a lot of respect for the SEC. Uh, Rhode Island is not a huge upset. They're playing Creighton. Creighton without a point guard and Maurice Watson. Um, I think they go into the, the tournament a little hampered. And uh, there's a couple other ones up here. Middle Tennessee State, everybody's talking about, so don't have to get too much into that one. But there are some upsets on here. Okay, I want to ask you about two in particular. One, let's go to UNR. Uh, the team up north, UNR, yeah. it got in as a 12 seed, the Lone Mountain West representative. We know why. We know the conference. Uh, they are talked to uh, one of their assistants this morning. You might guess who. They are on a plane tomorrow to, Mo to Milwaukee, where they will open up on Thursday, I believe. So take us through the so what you think is going to happen with UNR. Well. You know, UNR comes to the tournament as a team that I think, I thought before the season, if you look, uh, we're also going to run my preseason tournament. I had Nevada in. Yeah. Or UNR, there's a lot of people. UNR. Um, I had them in the tournament. I thought all year that they were a really good team. I thought they might be the best team uh, in the conference, and they proved that this week uh, at the Mountain West tournament. But they go to, against an Iowa State team that I think is really battle-tested. The Big 12 is awesome. And uh, I think Iowa State just might have a little too much for them. Okay. One other game before we get to the Sweet 16. Two of your favorite teams. Michigan, you grew up. You're an Ann Arbor kid. Yeah. But you also love Brad Underwood, who's now the coach at Oklahoma State. You would have preferred he's a coach at UNLV. He's not. That's true. I think we're both on the same page here. Michigan did a great job in the Big Ten tournament. They had the plane crash. They came back. They won four in four days, I believe. To me, and we were talking about this earlier, there's a lot of adrenaline when that happens, and you can kind of get on a roll momentum-wise. Now the Wolverines have to go back to Ann Arbor. You calm down. You feel little bumps from the plane ride. The adrenaline's gone. I think it's going to be hard for them to ratchet it back up. I actually think Oklahoma State's going to win against Michigan, and I think you feel the same. Yeah, and as you see, I picked Oklahoma State, and for the, really for the same reasons you talked about. Michigan had that emotional experience before the Big, Big Ten tournament. I think these are the two best coaches in the country. I know a lot of people disagree. I think Beeline is amazing. I think Brad Underwood is outstanding. We're seeing him get, finally get recognition now with the Oklahoma State job and the, the job he's done there. But it's a really tough spot for Michigan to do what they did, run through that Big Ten tournament, and now bounce back and try to play against a really tough, well-prepared well team in Oklahoma State. Agree with Adam here. So he's got Oklahoma State out, then he's got Louisville taking out Underwood in the next round. Uh, we'll get to the 16. Now, we might as well start in the West, because as Adam told you, he went completely crazy here, and he's already picked Gonzaga to get through to the 16. I didn't even finish it all the way. So, he's very excited. But let's go here in the 16. So Gonzaga, I like this matchup. Notre Dame-West Virginia here in the second round. You bring Notre Dame out. They've been in the last few Elite Eights, I believe. But you have the Zags taking them out. Why? Uh, I do. I, I like everything about Gonzaga. Obviously, the big man um, and Karnowski is really good, but Nigel williams Goss one of the best point guards. If you have a big man and a point guard and guys that can shoot and defend, you're going to be good in the tournament, and Gonzaga is. All right, down below here, we've got Xavier and uh, Zona. We all saw Zona at the Pac-12 tournament here at T-Mobile Arena. They were awesome. Alonzo Trier's back playing. Who do you like there? You know what? It's a tough call. Oh, no. Uh, it is. <laughs> I like Xavier a lot. And, uh, like, Xavier had a really rough stretch, lost a lot of guys, but they've gotten it together. They are really good. But... Arizona is the team to go. All right. You're officially firsting the Hillatology. You're seeing him pick his first game yes. there. Uh, officially. Let's go back up here in the East before we go to the eight. Uh, Villanova, number one overall seed, defending national champion. Uh, really good guard play. Tough kids. Uh, you have brought, I see Virginia as a five seed out who really can defend. I saw them play earlier this year. It was an interesting game early and then, and, and then what happened late. Who do you like in Nova against Virginia? Well, we talked about good coaches. I think Tony Bennett is among the best. Tony Bennett's among the best too. He's awesome. Uh, this is just not the same Virginia team we've seen in the past. They cannot score. Um, and Villanova battle test we know from last year, so we'll go Nova. Okay, going Nova, bringing the one seed out. 
Over here, I love SMU. I like that pick. You've got them uh, winning the team to play in and then beating Baylor. I think that's uh, I think that's a good pick there. That'll be an up and down game. That'll be fun. And then you have brought uh, your favorite team in the country out, Duke, with your favorite <laughs> coach, Mike Shashevsky. You brought him out. That's a really good matchup there. Duke is one of those teams, as we think I see in our final four picks. I'm not sure on Adam yet. Everyone's picking them. I get a little weary of teams like that when everyone's on them because of what they did in the ACC tournament. What do you like there in SMU Duke? Well, we talked about point guards and big guys. SMU is they're a really good team and really yes. well coached. Again, another coach that I love. That's why I'm moving them on. They don't have a point guard. They've kind of figured out a system to play with no point guard. I think that's tough against Duke, a Duke team that's on fire. And everybody talks about all the talent on Duke. Luke Kennard is a guy that can carry you. Even when you're not playing well, Luke Kennard can get hot. I'm going to go Duke in advance. I mean, as you see. Will Grayson Allen still be playing or will they have kicked someone in the head? 50 50. Okay, so we'll 50 find out. 50. But as you can see, a lot of chalk. A lot of, a lot of chalk. Early but, on, but no, early but on here's the thing. It, usually in the end, there's a lot of chalk in the end. I think that's what people talk about. They talk yes. about the chaos of the tournament. No, that that's like happen. the first two days. The first two days, yes. And then you move on, and, and the, the cream of the crop rises. Uh, we've got Kansas and Purdue over here. You've brought Swanigan out, uh, beating Iowa State, who you had to take out UNR. Swanigan against Kansas. Who do you like? Well, I talked about a lot of chalk, so I have to figure out a way to go no chalk. And I think we're going to do it here. This and is here, the time? Here's another reason why. First of all, I love Purdue. Purdue can be the best can be the best team in the country when they're playing well. They also can absolutely play awful and have a terrible game. I don't think it's going to happen. And Kansas might knock it out of that second round. So I'm weary of putting them too far ahead. So I'm going to go Purdue here. Mm -hmm. Hillatology with its first huge upset of the uh, tournament. Uh, come down here in Oregon lost Boucher. We saw what happened in the Pac-12 tournament. Arizona went inside early. Adam covered that whole tournament. That kid's really important. He's a stretch kid who you bring bigs out. Now they don't have him. You take away your big shot blocker. I think it really hurts him. I do think that we were talking about how Michigan comes. He has to get back up. I do think the four days helps Oregon because when you have to do it right after that kid gets hurt on Saturday night, that's tough. But they'll have four days to adjust. I still think that's going to hurt them. You've got Louisville and Oregon here. Well, you're kind of reading my mind, and then you threw cold water on it at the end. But okay. I think Oregon gets it together. Boucher, he's a nightmare matchup problem yes. for a lot of teams, and I think that's why – uh, teams have a lot of difficulty playing them, but Dylan Brooks is awesome. Uh, he's a go-to guy. You need those in the tournament, and I think they get by. I don't think I don't think Louisville has one of those guys. Oh, Oregon's coming on. Okay. Yeah. All right, down here, last week, 16s. Uh, we've got Carolina and Butler. You took. Uh, I, I like Middle Tennessee there in the pick. That spread is rising as we speak. I don't think that's an upset in the 12-5 game with Middle Tennessee. But you've got Butler going out. Something tells me we might see a crazy thing here, another uh, upset. I'm not sure, but Carolina against Butler. I did too much up here. I'm, I'm, All right. I'm, I'm calming down. I'm going to calm <laughs> down. And you're going back to the chalk. I'm going to go back to chalk and go North Carolina. Right. I just think they get it done. This is interesting. UCLA won at Rupp earlier in the year. They can score 100 in any given night. They can also give up 100. We're not sure how they're going to defend. Uh, the one thing I told Adam before this is I'm really surprised as a two seed given Kentucky's on the front of the jersey. No one is talking about Kentucky. It's kind of weird to me that they could even be underplayed as a two seed being who they are. Who do you like in the rematch, Bru Bruins and Kentucky? Interesting that you brought that rematch up. But this is a game, as you said, we saw it in Rupp. UCLA went and won. They're a different team now. They're not, they're not going all out on offense. They're trying to defend a little bit. Different kind of a matchup. I think it's a really tough game. It's down to the wire, but I'm going to go Kentucky. All right. All right, we're down to the eights. Uh, we're going to go back over here, down to the eights. Let's go to the east first. He's gone chalk, Nova Duke. Uh, here we go again. Can the one seed, overall one seed, who won it last year, use that experience and topple Coach K? No, they cannot. Coach K oh! is done. I know people are not going to be happy. Your favorite team is through. <laughs> I know they're not going to be happy, but wow. Duke's in the final four again. All right. Uh, we come down here. I'm going to be up at San Jose. I can't wait. I, I hope this is the matchup I see up there. I have no idea if I'm going to. But Gonzaga, Arizona. Again, a team, a rematch. Gonzaga beat Arizona. I don't. Was Trier, did Trier play that game? Did not, he did not. Yeah, that's a big difference. So Gonzaga as the one seed against uh, Zona. You have Chalk here. Who do you have this time? I love Gonzaga. Okay. Love them. This team is awesome. There's this a butt coming. This is their best chance. There's a butt the coming. Four. The best chance. People say, when's <laughs> it finally going to happen? It could be the year. But. But, it's <laughs> but we go with Arizona. Yes, we do. All right. So here's the uh, here's the, the key here. Just to say, uh, Larry Markinen needs to start shooting the ball better. He's playing great. He's playing better than he did early in the year. But his shot has fallen off. He needs to make shots. Well, he led the. I think he led the conference free throw shooting. I saw him miss four straight the other night. Yeah. You yeah. can't you can't he's do that in close games. I think as his the rest of his game is picked up, his shot has fallen off. But he needs to get it back. We come up here. Here's his upset city up here. He's got Purdue. Uh, as a four against Oregon as the three in the Midwest. Nice Kansas City will be there. Is it too late? Can I no, it's too it? late. It's too late. They've already started writing emails and they haven't even seen this thing wow. yet. Uh, Purdue against Oregon. Who do you have going to the four? I think no. I know who you're going to pick. I think you're wrong. Okay, you I think, think you're going Oregon? Swanigan. No, I think you're, right. you're going you're Purdue. Right. You're right, I think I you're going Purdue. Go. 
You're going Matt, you, Matt Humans, former RJ, his alma mater is now in the Final Four, according to a Hillatology. A lot of people have been talking about the Big Ten, saying it's not very good and don't pick Big Ten teams to go far. I actually think this Purdue team is the one that can get very hot, and I think they'll do that this All time. right. Down here, uh, Chalk. Uh, Carolina, Kentucky. I was at the game. I'm not sure if you're at the game. I was there at T-Mobile. Awesome game. Monk went for like 47. I mean, it was an incredible game at T-Mobile Arena. Uh, a lot of time has passed, obviously. So who do you like in the rematch? I'm going to go Carolina. I, I just think when they have it all together, uh, they can just score against anyone. Uh, they don't play a whole lot of defense, but they might not have to in this game. This is, might, might be another 100 to 95 type yeah, of game. I hope it is. And in this spot, I think the one thing Carolina has is they can really hit the glass hard on the offensive end, get some offense to put back buckets, and I'll go Carolina. So you got Carolina. We have reached the four in the first annual Hillatology. Yep. God, there's no way Obama was this good. No lot, way. A lot of uh, old school blue blood programs yep. here. Let's go over here. First semifinal on April 1st, Duke, Arizona, two uh, heavyweight programs in the country. Coach K has won 100 of these things. Sean Miller, this would actually advance Sean Miller if Hillatology is correct to his first final four. Who do you like? God, he's... he's... I actually think this is a coaching mismatch, big time, in favor of Sean Miller. I don't, I don't think there's a question. <laughs> so your true Duke feelings have become to uh, to come around. Now I I made sure I did not look at the brackets far enough ahead. I want to do this live with you. This is an interesting matchup to me. It's a tough call. I'm gonna go with Duke. <gasps> I'm gonna go with them. I do. I think that what they've been doing this last week is what they should have been doing all year long. They Does everyone at home realize Hillatology hates Duke? <laughs> and he has them in the championship Can't game. Stand uh, let's go over here now. You have Purdue. Uh, you have Swanigan against Carolina. I think I know which way you're going because I think on Monday night of the championship you're going to want this Tobacco Road. You want yeah, Tobacco Road. Great. You want the fourth uh, fourth matchup. You already know it. North Carolina goes and plays Duke. Okay. So we're down here uh, Monday night, April 3rd. Um, from Glendale, Arizona. You have Duke and Carolina. This would be the fourth matchup. The Dukies have won two of the three. Before you even say it, I think I know who you'll pick, but you go ahead and pick and I'll be I'll tell you if I if really? you're right. Yes. You want to guess first? I believe you'll pick the Tar Heels. I'm a little too predictable. Maybe I'll pick <laughs> that next year. I might have to change it up next year and uh, right. change up how I do my methodology, but yeah, I'm gonna go North Carolina. Give me a final score. They played they played three times. Yes. Uh, Dukes won twice. I think they even it out. I think they're very even teams. I think this is where they get even two and two. I'm gonna go Carolina. Give me a final score. <sighs> I'm gonna go eighty four to seventy eight. Wow. All right. This is high intense stuff here at the Review Journal, the first annual Hillatology. Adam Hill has picked uh, North Carolina to beat Duke. We're going to take a very close up picture of this bracket so you can email him and call him on a daily basis as the ladies update this and tear apart all of his picks. Never call me or email me. I don't want to hear from anyone. I had nothing to do with this, but he's the expert. I think it's a good bracket. I like a lot of his picks. So check back daily at thereviewjournal.com. It's Ed and Adam, and we hope you enjoy March Madness.